Hey guys, uh, thank you guys for coming here. Um, I have a message that the Lord has placed on my heart. I know it's going to be good, and I feel the Lord has given, given me this message for you guys. I will be preaching for and reading from 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel 23, verse, starting at verse 9 and 10. I, I put verse 10 on the board for you guys, for those that forgot their Bibles. So, let me read. And after him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Ahohite, one of the three mighty men with David, when they defied the Philistines who were gathered there for battle. And the men of Israel had retreated. He arose and attacked the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand stuck to the sword. The Lord brought about a great victory that day. Stop right there. Now... Quickly, briefly, I just want to give you guys a, a concept of who David was, who David was. Obviously, he was a warrior, but he was not just any kind of warrior. He was a mighty warrior. And this passage right here that I'm reading from is about David's mighty men. So men who were just like David or equivalent at a level just like David. And David, as you guys know, the Lord prepared to fight against lions and bears. And when his time came, he fought against Goliath, the giant of that day, the warrior of the Philistines. And when he overcame, the Israelites got boldness, and that's how he came forth into being recognized as a warrior, and which led him to a king, but we all know it was because God's hand was over him, and he was anointed. Now briefly, who were the Philistines? In ancient culture, it says that the Philistines were sea people. And the reason they're considered sea people because they traveled to the land of Philistine, which would have been Syria today. They traveled to the land of Philistines by boat uh, through sea. Now, something about the Philistines that you need to keep in mind is that they were warlords. They were advanced in warfare. See, while the age at that time in the book of Judges leading up to the book of Samuel, their weaponry was made of bronze, where the Philistines had iron, which would be turned into steel. So there is a distinction between the both. The first distinction is that a steel, you're able to make it lighter. So when you swing your movements, they're lighter, more smoother when you, when you swing the sword. Another distinction is that it was a, a bit stronger than a bronze. Steel is stronger than bronze. So the Philistines were advanced in warfare while the Israelites were still in a Bronze Age. That's what it would, it would be called in ancient culture, uh, the Bronze Age, right? So we're entering the Iron Age, which would be the, the Philistines. And they were advanced amongst others at that time. Now, this, this passage that I'm reading from talks about mighty men of war, mighty men of warfare, and there is this distinction between them. I would like to give you guys the list of the distinction between them. Starting with the first one. First one is Adino the Enzite. You read about him in verse 8. See, Adino was a mighty man. He killed 800 men by himself with a spear. You know, the imagery that comes to my mind is that the spirit of the Lord that was on Samson, who killed a thousand men, was the same spirit upon this man who killed 800 men. I, I, I see the, this, the similarity of warriors amongst these two, because the spirit of the Lord can only lead a man to kill so many people as them. And so Adino the Enzite was the first mentioned in these David's mighty men. The second would be Eleazar, which we just read in verse 10, uh, 9 and 10, but I will come back to him. The third is Shama. Shama, you read about in verse 11 and 12. See, Shama made the history pages of this book. For when the Philistines came into the field of the Israelite territory for lentils, the Israelites fled, but Shama stood his ground. He stood his ground all alone and he did not flee. And he fought off the, the Philistines until they fled. All by himself. The, the fourth would be 
the three mighty men. The three mighty men who, in a time when the Philistines conquered a certain territory of Israel, David yearned for the water in that territory. And these three mighty men, hearing the yearning of David, of his longing to drink that water, took it upon themselves to go and please their king by going into the enemy territory at night and getting water to bring back to David the king. While no one else was willing to go thus far to the front, to, to even where they were starting, these guys went into the heart of their territory. And they made the history pages of 2 Samuel. The fifth warrior is Abishai in verse 18 and 19. And he is a warrior because it says that he killed 300 of his enemies. 300 enemies. The sixth one is Benaniah. You read it in verse 20 and 23. And something intriguing about this man is that he killed two lion-like men. Two lion-like men. When we look at the life of David, when the Lord prepared him to go against lions and bears, and then he fought a Goliath, you could see that the Lord prepared him for such a time to go up against a Goliath. So when I read about Benaniah, and it says that he killed two lion-like men, in my mind, it tells me that he killed two men as vicious and as a warrior as Goliath. So he would have killed two Goliaths, while David just killed one. Because they were lying like men. Amen? Amen. 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 Alright. You see, and at the end of the passage of this passage that I read from, from verse 24 to 39, it gives a list of the warriors that made it through the history pages, and there is a distinction amongst other other individuals. And a total there is 37, 37, including Uriah the Hittite, he is mentioned in this passage. And there is a verse that I really like that you guys can meditate on. It's Psalms 144, 1. And it says, The Lord is my rock, he trains my hands for battle and my fingers for warfare. The reason why these men were distinguished amongst the others is because they trusted in the Lord the rock. And they were they were chosen through the history to be in the history of this precious pages of the Bible. There is a distinction between them and others. I remember mean, growing up in Los Angeles, uh, as you guys may know, I did graffiti as, as, as a young age, and graffiti had a, a big toll upon my life. You know, we went about picking, um, us and other crews went about picking three different types of distinct distinctions for someone to be in the graffiti crew. One was that you had to have you have to have talent. You have to be able to get a spray can and be able to do a certain letter that other people are not able to do, or you're able to mix paint like others are not able to do. An another distinction is that you had to be bold. See, I was one of those bold uh, individuals who would, at a stop sign, would climb the light and just uh, hang and just start doing graffiti and put my name on the the red the red light, red, yellow, green light. Or I would hang over a warehouse and just hang from there. Or others would go and hang over freeways or run into the center dividers of a freeway. And they're choosing, they were chosen amongst others, right? Or um, uh, uh, the third one would be that they had to be bold in the sense of just crazy that they could go walk a mile and just catch about 25 to 50 uh, graffiti spots within a mile and it had to be like blasted up high like it had to be seen from a distance so those were the three distinctions that a person would would be chosen into the graffiti life right but right here we see that these men were chosen because of their courage their reliability upon the Lord while we relied on our talents and skills these men, according to Psalms 144, relied on the ability of God to be able to train their hands and their fingers for warfare. They relied upon the Lord. Who are we relying upon today? Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> you see, when, when I think about these men who made the history pages of the Bible, warriors, 
What does that mean for us today? It means that by us putting our trust in the Lord, we are able to overcome great victories through faith. Through faith, we become warriors. Modern day warriors today are making history in the pages in heaven. And a picture on that day when the Lord is looking at his warriors, men, women, and children, and he's going to say to them, well done, good and faithful servant, who through faith subdue kingdoms, work righteousness, obtain promises, stop the mouths of lying, quench the violence, fire, escape the edge of the sword. At the end of that, the verse it says, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to partake in the passing pleasures of sin. You know what that tells me? For the heroes of in chapter Hebrews 11, it, it tells me that they would rather die than fail Christ. And I see these warriors right here in 2 Samuel who would rather die than fail Christ. Amen? Amen. So now let's go back to Eleazar. In verse 10, I wrote that he arose. Eleazar arose for battle. You see, he did not fear when the Israelites ran away. He did not back down. He did not retreat while everyone else did. You see, we might face opposition alone. Your friends may leave you. People might talk about you behind your back. The enemy may come against you with everything he has. You may stand in the face of the enemy, but a warrior of God does not retreat. Neither will shall you retreat. Don't retreat. Even if everyone else retreats. Second is that he attacked until his hand was weary. There are ugly days ahead. There are ugly days ahead when you are going to be alone. When there's going to be temptation coming your way like no other. Where there's going to be trials and tribulations coming your way. But don't. And it might bring you, get you weary. But don't stop. Don't stop fighting. Don't stop fighting the way Jesus taught us to fight. See, when Satan and all his tactics came towards Jesus to try to tempt him, what did he do? He used the word of God. And he began to quote scripture. And he began to say words like, It is written. It is written. And we see Jesus doing that. He gave us an example on how we shall fight off the enemy. Resist the devil and he shall flee from you, Jesus says. Resist the world. Resist temptation and fight. Fight even if it kills you. Don't be weary. Don't be weary. Get on your knees and pray and fight. Fight for your loved ones who are in struggles or who are falling and sinning right now. Fight. Don't be discouraged. Fight and don't retreat. quickly you guys make a difference you guys make a difference you warriors of Christ make a difference Amen. if you quit you will lose ground the Philistines if these warriors would have retreated the Philistines would have took the ground they would have took the ground but they didn't retreat so there was no ground taken from the enemy the enemy was not allowed to take ground in fact, they retreated. And the Israelites took the promises of God upon their own hands. That this is their land. This is theirs. You too take the promises of God. Don't let the enemy lie to you. Don't let the enemy lie to you to retreat. But take hold of the promises of God. Now something intriguing it says that the Lord brought the victory. The second point is that the Lord brought a great victory that day. 
See, the reason why these heroes in Hebrews 11 and these warriors in 2 Samuel are able to make the pages of history, and you guys too, when you stand on that great day, is because you kept the faith. You may be broken, but keep the faith. You may lose your job, but keep the faith. The enemy may come against you with everything, but keep the faith. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and God will come and deliver you. For it is the Lord who brings about the great victory. It is the Lord who brings about the great victory. But overall, Jesus, Jesus is the ultimate warrior. You see, we read about Eleazar, and we read about these other men and women. We read about David. But Jesus ultimately is the greater David. Jesus is ultimately the greater Eleazar and the greater warrior. In verse 10 of what I read, it says, He arose and attacked the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand stuck to the sword. This was his weapon of choice. Eleazar's weapon of choice was, the, was his sword to overcome the enemy. And his hand got stuck to the sword. You know, when I see the Jesus being the greater of Eleazar, you know what I see? I see Jesus too, his hand being stuck to his weapon of choice. When they nailed his hands to the cross, it was not men who stuck his hands to the cross. It was Jesus who chose his weapon of choice, which was the cross. And on that great day, when all of hell, when all of sin, when all of temptation, when all of the world, when death itself tried to overcome Jesus, it could not prevail. Death itself. You know what the Bible tells me? The Bible tells me that death itself could not prevail against Jesus Christ. You know why? Because on the third day, he resurrected. Death couldn't hold him down. He resurrected on the third day, and he overcame the principalities of darkness. He overcame sin through his blood where there is remissions of sin. Through his blood. Through the weapon of his choice, which was the cross. The cross at Calvary. That was his weapon of choice. You see, we're all called warriors. Warriors of Christ. And we ought to be warriors of Christ. And the only reason we're able to be warriors of Christ is because we have a greater warrior. Who is Jesus Christ. Who overcame Darkness, Satan, and all his tactics. And he has sh showed us how to fight. Jesus was not weary. In a sense, he was bodily weary, but he did not quit. Amen? Amen. 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 And I want to read something to you guys from, from uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. And this is speaking about Jesus and what he did to the principalities of darkness. It says, Having this arm, principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Through the cross of Jesus Christ, he made a spectacle of all his enemies. When Satan thought he was going to overcome and prevail and when he put him on the when Jesus was stationed at Calvary on the cross so everyone could see the enemy thought that he had overcome but he didn't it was actually Jesus who overcame with the cross and through his blood it was Jesus who overcame we are able to overcome today and I encourage you guys even if you may be weary, don't quit. But keep the faith and believe in what Jesus is able to do, what the Lord is able to do to bring about a great victory in your life and Amen. into others' lives. Amen. 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 And that, that is how we're going to overcome the same way Jesus overcame at the cross. Amen. 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 Let's bow our heads. Let's bow our heads. Thank you, Jesus God, for this word, my Lord.